You're watching the movie with Silas. Today, I am reviewing the new horror film, Maxine. Hello, everybody. Welcome to You're Watching a Movie with Silas Lindenstein. I am your host, Silas Lindenstein. As I said, today I am reviewing the newest horror film, Maxine. Maxine is part three of a trilogy by Ty West, directed and written by Ty West. Uh, the, the first film, uh, the, the series was kicked off by X. The movie X uh, took place in like the 19, uh, 1970s. Then we about, about, a, about a, an adult film production happening on a little rural town in, in the U.S. And then the follow up movie was Pearl, which took place like in the, the 30s or 40s. And uh, f- well, while it, it, it followed one of the villains from the first movie. And then Maxine follows the, the I, don't, I don't know if I want to say ingenue uh, for this film, but the lead actress, she, she, the only survivor from the original film X. So this takes place in 1984. So we're looking, um, I don't have the exact dates for the first one, but this takes place years after the original film. Uh, she was the lone survivor. And uh, yeah, and so that's where this is. So as I said, it's a horror suspense film, rated R, one hour, 44 minutes, uh, written and directed by Ty West. Uh, The cast, Mia Goth reprising a role as Maxine Minx. That's what we're calling her. I think she has a different last name for this one. Along with uh, Elizabeth DeBecky, Moses Sumney, Michelle Monaghan, Bobby Cannavale, Halsey, Lily Collins, and Giancarlo Esposito. But last but not least, Kevin Bacon. Kevin Kevin Bacon's got a really fun role in this. I, I think he'll do. Him and Esposito, uh, wonderful actors. It's great seeing them in this. Uh, I was surprised. I saw no trailers before this. I wanted to come in with this really fresh overall over overall a very enjoyable film very enjoyable it's probably my third favorite of the of the three but i think it's a very enjoyable horror film and i think if you're a fan of this uh of of the series uh does it help complete it maybe in some ways the story in 1980s hollywood adult film star and aspiring actress maxine minx finally break gets her break big break However, as a mysterious killer stalks the starlets of Los Angeles, a trail of blood threatens to reveal her sinister past. Mm. So, as I said, good film. Good, uh, solid horror, solid uh, scare. I was scared. Hands up. Hands up on my face. Going like, ooh, ooh, some, some little gruesome moments. So, there's some blood. I don't know if it's... I don't know if it's totally slasher. There was some slashes. And I think my imagination took t- took a hold of me a lot okay there are some pretty gnarly kills in this uh, now that now that i say that that yeah yeah some some hard to look at times but at least i can cover my eyes for a brief time or, or and not look and and i get the gist once the reaction from the audience is mellowed out a bit someone asked me i was telling them about the original series and i was excited about seeing this film and they were asking me if it was a slasher and i i still say no with the caveat like it's not it's not clean that's for sure just be prepared to cover your eyes and not look sometimes but i think the nervousness in it the story that it creates is 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 pretty pretty worth it so maxine is there she gets a role in this film, pure the Puritan t- two, like a sequel is made up franchise, and this story kind of follows follows that. If her getting on this and the effects in her life, she's an adult film star or f- film person, I guess, and trying to break into the regular mainstream films, and which. You know, as as we've probably heard, if you if you follow this kind of thing in in real life, it can be very challenging. Mia is Mia Goth plays uh, Ma- Maxine. She does a great job showing how haunted her character is by the past. There there's some flashbacks of the previous film, 
and you still see that desire of her wanting to be famous that she had in the first one. She'll do anything to be famous, but that the PTSD, the, the nervousness of life now that that event caused, she's a stronger woman than she was in the beginning of the first one. Uh, So you've seen that growth in her and she's just, I mean, she's not a villain in this, but she's not taking crap from nobody. Right. I just think she does such a fine job. And then Kevin Bacon as this uh, detective in this is our uh, private detective. He's, He's really great. This is like a great little character role for Kevin Bacon. I think I think you're gonna really enjoy him in this. Um, overall, the like the tone of the film, I really liked. You know, the '80s, the celebration of the '80s. The they they really got it. They they really hit that well. And this world that Ty West, the director, is playing with, it's a it's interesting. It's fun. It's I, I don't know how to describe the quite style of the, the ambient, but it feels, you know, like a part of there's a VHS movie rental store as part of the film. That's just that's just there. And there are parts of me that think the the film looks like a video you would have watched in the 80s. So like it's almost like it's imperfect. That's the tone of it. It's not like we're not highlighting the. The CGI kind of stale look of modern films i think i feel like there there is a little bit of grittiness to the of the filter they use on it for the for the movie because you know they're using high tech right but it doesn't necessarily feel high tech and just they capture the world uh j- just wonderfully now i did say you know what's my third best of this uh i i think it wasn't i mean part of the description says horror suspense and i think it is a lot more suspense than than the other ones were horror i didn't until the like the third act of the film i i'm not even sure it would have just been a gross suspense i'm not sure horror was quite there for me and then i remember scenes and i'm like no i guess i guess i guess it was there throughout it but I didn't find it as intriguing as the first two. I wasn't. I was curious. I wanted to know what was what was happening, who the like who the killer is kind of of this. But I wasn't. I wasn't dying of curiosity. I was kind of like, uh, who's it going to be? Who they who, who they drudging up from the past for this? I'm not I don't know where they're going. Which is good. But I didn't feel like whoever they had was going to be this amazing revelation. And I still didn't feel that at the end. Uh, it was it was an interesting choice for the film, how it resolves. But I wasn't as excited uh, about about the ending as I think they would want me to be. So it it just didn't have that oomph in the last one. Also, I kind of felt like they could have shot this film or not. Like it wasn't really, does it close out the trilogy? Well, kind of. Yeah. I mean, you get to see the follow-up, you get to see what she does, but this film didn't need to happen. I could have been, they could have ended the last two and I'd be fine. The rumor has it that there's a fourth one being written and it will depend on how well this film does. So maybe that, will be a better conclusion if they do do that. I don't know. I, I, I just think like, I wasn't, I wasn't necessarily disappointed. I guess I just wasn't at the end as fulfilled as I hoped I would be. But I, I do think the performances are worthy of, uh, of seeing uh, certainly if you're a horror fan and if you like the other two, go, go see it. Uh, Ty West. I I really I really like this. Well, I love when an actor uh, or a director writer kind of like 
when they, they write and direct it and, and it feels, it feels consistent and the style feels consistent. I, I, I love, I love the writer director creating the art because it doesn't, don't get me wrong. Filmmaking is a very team effort and it takes a team. It takes a village to create a film. You got, you, you can't do it by yourself for sure. But when you have the writer director together as the same person, it just helps create a good vision for the future, a vision for how this film will, will look uh, maybe leading into other films that's solid. And that, and that shows in this work. There's, yeah, there's, there's, there's a lot. It's hard, you know, mysteries are particularly, I think, hard to shoot um, or to, to talk about without giving anything away, right? Um, I, I, I'm trying, the lesson from this film, now that's, it's challenging for this. I think the lesson is sort of that there are there are people who feel destined to stardom and they will do anything to get there. And so maybe it's a cautionary tale. Maybe it's or maybe maybe it's be careful what you wish for. That's another possibility. I, I don't know. It's every every film has lessons it has multiple lessons in it and the this one at, at horror films can be a little i think a little harder to to find the messaging in that or or they're sometimes i guess sometimes they're just absolutely full of messages but i i th- i think as i as i walk away from the film i just i'm impressed by not impressed by what what's the impression upon me is man, Maxine. Like she just keeps going forward no matter what. Like she is so razor focused on being a star. She'll just, she'll just repress everything else to, to make her dreams come true. And maybe, maybe it shows that we have to sacrifice. She's sacrificing not just her body and not just her soul, but like the ability to rest and just be at peace to, to, to go after this dream. And I'm like, I, (laughs) I don't have it in me what she had to go do whatever it takes. Right. Like, I was telling him after the film, like I, you know, some people will do anything it takes to make it. I, I don't do anything like I'm, I'm in Seattle. I'm far from the action. Uh, I, I'm not trying. I'm not only not willing to cross lines. I'm not willing to get out of bed. I guess Seattle's perfect for that. Uh, if Seattle did a horror movie, Seattle's monster would just be depression, right? It wouldn't be, you know, we, we don't need creatures. We don't need, we don't have tornadoes. We don't have hurricanes. What's going to get you here? Depression. And that would be an interesting horror film. Make, 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 make depression. Make depression your villain. Let's try let the cops find depression out there i guess it could also be like a inside out film right i guess anyway uh in my in my rating system of love it like it or lose it uh i'm gonna i'm gonna give maxine a like it i i I did enjoy it i i was glad i saw it It, it's not particularly long hour 44 minutes nice nice movie in and out uh Definitely worth the stunning performances by all the whole cast. Whole cast is great, and and uh, see, see where Ty West takes you. And, and I'll and I'll tell you this: it gave me enough of an appetite for it that if a four comes out, uh, yeah, I'll go. I'll see what's going. On. I don't know where is she at this point. Is it going to be in the nineties? Maybe two thousand twenties? Is she 
a grandma now, a adult film star grandma. I don't know, but I'll, you know what? I'll check it out. Ty West has earned my trust with his franchise and I want to see where he'll take it. So if, if you, if you film it, I will come. I will watching it. Not the, not look that joke can go in a lot of ways based off this film, but so I'm going to leave it there. Okay. Uh, but anyway, I don't know. Did you see Maxine? Did you, am I crazy? Did you, did you love it? Did you like it? Did you lose it? I liked it. What did you think? Let me know in the comments, uh, and, and, and subscribe. So you can let, you can find out, uh, the next time a movie review drops out of nowhere, uh, you'll be notified right away. Okay. So like subscribe and share with your friends. And uh, I want to thank you for listening, but mostly I want to thank you for watching a movie with Silas Lindenstein. You're watching a movie with Silas Lindenstein in the theaters you find us. So go on and press play to rewind us. This speech that is timeless. Love it like it or we lose it, can't find it. And we ain't keen on being reminded about the film if it isn't tough. We spend a lot of time at the cinema. It's just me and my friends, we watch plenty stuff. For movies, yeah, I've been above. Whether big or they small, no, for me, don't make a difference. Love them You're watching a movie with Silas Lindenstein in the theaters you find us. So go on and press play to rewind us. This speech it is timeless. Love it like it or we lose it, can't find it. And we ain't keen on being reminded. But the film, if it didn't hit, no, gotta lose it. Watch movies with my friends, bringing joy, that's the blueprint. So come on and let's do this. Leave pain behind us. And relax your mind, come watch a movie with Silas.